Hello and welcome back to Biba Hunter Scale Models. In today's video I want to show how I built a diorama base and a French styled barn from scratch out of styrofoam and other materials like balsa wood. Please enjoy the video and have fun! I started with trying different positions of the tank and some additional elements and determining the dimensions of the base. When I was satisfied I marked the edges on the foam. And also mark the positions of the tank and the add-ons as a reminder where I want them to be. I then prepared my hot wire foam cutter to cut off the leftover and end up with the base for the diorama. As an additional detail I want to build an old French farm barn and made a sketch here with how I want it to look and with the dimensions of the building. The pieces I needed for this building were cut from foam and here I cut out the ground floor. Because the surface of the foam has a very rough pattern, I made a thin cut with the hot wire cutter and ended up with a smooth surface with which I can work with. I drew the roof slope of the gable onto the foam and set my hot wire into the right angle to make this slightly complicated cut. And with that I had the basic corpus of the building. The gable was glued to the ground floor and fixed in place with toothpicks until the glue was dry. And excess glue was removed so I ended up with a smooth front. I also cut a small piece which will serve as a wall in the left back area, tested the fit on the base plate and marked the position again for later steps. Then the fun part slowly began and I marked the position of the barn's gate and a small window onto the front side. Here my sketch with the dimensions was very helpful. The corners of the building will be made out of bigger stone, a typical feature for French buildings. And I marked the areas where plaster remains will be so I don't have to waste time on carving stones here. The next step was to cut out the openings of the gate and window and I made a deep cut with a fresh sharp blade in my hobby knife around the borders. After that I could easily cut out the material in between these cuts and ended up with a sharp nice frame for the later gate and wooden window. In the smaller window I used a pipe wrench to be more precise what would have been too slow on the large gate. I then started to carve the natural stone wall into the foam with a sharp hobby knife. I here used a reference picture to not end up with a repeating pattern and to make it a bit easier for me. And I am very sorry for the bad video quality in this part, but it turned out to be a bit difficult to film this bright light reflecting foam. 
I then had to widen the joints I cut into the foam and I did this with a customized popsicle stick I sharpened and shaped. I went through every joint I cut before and widened it and rounded the edges of the stones. And yes, this is as time consuming as it sounds, but it's very relaxing and rewarding when you look at the finished result. Working with foam is just a big pleasure with endless possibilities. The left side of the building will be visible in the scene later and so was treated in the same way. To create the bigger cornerstones I cut several thin stripes out of foam and pieced them in the matching size. were then glued with one side first onto the building's edge and I let them dry before I banded them around the corner. So while the first side was drying I cut smaller pieces for the other corner as there only the front will be visible in the scene. And these were then glued in position with wood glue as always when I work with foam. To give the first side more time to dry I used the opportunity to give the stone wall some more texture with a crumpled piece of aluminum foil. An easy and quick way to lose the smooth foam texture. And as I was aiming for an old and not brand new build look, I removed some random stones or pieces of them with my tweezers to create an old worn out look. And with a toothpick cut in half, I pressed random stones into the foam to make the wall look a bit more irregular and not perfectly straight. With these steps the building gets a lot more details and character. The lintel beams for the gate and window were cut out of balsa wood and glued in place. And then it was finally time to bend the cornerstones and glue the other half onto the building. And with some weight I made sure they stay in position until the glue is dry. With the corner drying I started building the barn's gate and I used popsicle sticks for the rear crossbars. The wooden slats were again made out of balsa wood and I here cut enough stripes for the gate and the window. I rounded the edges of the slats with a small saw so they look used and not brand new. For the construction of the gate I temporarily fixed the crossbars on my table with Petafix and glued the slats on top of them. I here had to make sure to end up with a 90 degree angle so the gate matches the opening in the building. The window was built the same way and to make it more interesting I applied the typical cross slats which should stabilize the slats. And to improve the old look I rounded the edges more with my hobby knife.
and added more damage and a rotten look by fraying the ends. I also scraped a kind of wood grain in the smooth surface of the balsa wood for more texture. After this messy process I cleaned and smoothed the parts with an old toothbrush and some fine sanding. And these are the parts which I am very satisfied with. But before I could glue them in place I had to paint the foam behind them black. This way I made sure there is no green foam to be seen once they are installed as I would not reach every place with my airbrush and primer when I would have installed them first. With that done I could finally glue them in place and arrange them in the right angle. To further beautify the barn and add more details I mounted another layer of boards on the gable to get a clean finish for the roof. Here I too added some damage, weir and tear and wood grain with my hobby knife before I glued them in place. For the roof I used Juvela Scenix iron sheetings which came in very handy here. I measured the dimensions I needed and cut them with a big saw so I had straight cuts, cleaned them and glued them in place. Excess glue was removed with a cotton swab. For the roof ridge I used a piece of copper foil which is a great material for such tasks as it is very flexible and nice to work with. And this too was glued in place with wood glue to the foam. For the gate handle I banded a piece of copper wire and glued it to the gate with super glue after I made some small holes for it to fit in. With the basic construction done I applied diluted wood glue onto the whole piece and I made this for two reasons. The first one is the, to make the foam more stable and firm so I can handle it better without being worried about damaging it because it's so soft. And the second reason is that the foam and the balsa wood would soak up the paint like a sponge later while painting. Like this the materials are saturated with the glue and are more easy to paint. And the small side wall was made and treated the same way like the building. To create the plaster residues on the wall I used Vallejo's earth texture paste. This has a nice rough texture when drying and is very suitable for this job. I applied it by brush to be more precise and could clean them with water afterwards without any problems. To give the stone wall more texture I tapped it with an almost empty brush and so applied a very small amount of the paste. It almost felt a bit like dry brushing. When the paste was completely dry I sanded it with a fine sanding mat to create a smoother surface and remove protruding pimples. 
I implied the presence of nails by making small holes into the slats. They will be worked out later with paints and therefore avoid the look of the floating slats. And with that the building is mostly done and I could move on to the base plate. I decided for Juvila's concrete slabs to create the ground of the scene. They look awesome and are greatly detailed. I tried out different layouts until I was satisfied and because I was short of a few slabs I had to get creative. I made some slabs out of foam and placed them where the tank will stand so they are not really visible. With all problems solved and fixed I started gluing the slabs piece by piece in place. To make the ground even more interesting I broke some slabs and placed them in pieces so they look like they cracked from driving over them for years. To level the building to the concrete slabs I applied two layers of popsicle sticks where I will later glue the house on and wall on top. And to put some pressure on the glue while drying I made some good use of my history literature. With the ground basically done I could now frame the scene with wooden veneer. I attached it with using double sided tape as seen in night shifts videos. But it wasn't sticking as I hoped and next time I will use wood glue again. With the scene framed I could now fill the empty spaces between the slabs. The idea is that there were broken slabs which were removed and the holes filled up with rubble by the farmer. I used Juvila's rubble in the box here, applied it and flattened it out. I next filled the earthen areas with grinded real earth. And also brushed the real earth into the joints of the slabs. To make gluing it easier I soaked the rubble and earth with isopropanol to break the surface tension. And after that I used diluted wood glue and let it flow into the soaked earth. Saturated with the iso the earth accepted the wood glue without any problems. Excess superglue on the slabs was spread with a brush and no real problem as everything will be painted later. While the glue was still wet I applied some more real earth onto it to give the surface more texture and make it less smooth. When the earth and rubble dried completely I could remove the overhang of the wooden frame at the corners and sanded it smooth. Of course the house needed a wooden backside too to make a smooth even finish with the frame. I drew the shape on a piece of wood and cut it out with my hobby knife. After testing the fit I glued it to the building using wood glue this time as I wasn't convinced with the double sided tape result. With the frame glued and sanded I could cut it flush to the ground. I here used my hobby knife with a new blade and carefully removed protruding axes. And to level the frame perfectly to the joints I applied more real earth and brushed it flush to the frame. 
this time I used VMS sand and ballast trees to fix it in place because this stuff runs perfectly into the joints and I needed less here than on the first run where I had to glue all joints so I choose the cheaper wood glue then. Now I could add some vegetation in form of static grass. I applied dots of undiluted wood glue by brush and then sprinkled the static grass with my applicator on top. I placed it in the joints, the rubbled areas and of course the earthen area in front of the wall, everywhere where wild grass would grow. And this is the result after applying several lengths of grass and therefore the different colors, which is again no problem because everything will be painted later. To bring some variation into the still flat grass, I used sanitary hemp and placed it as longer grass tufts randomly into the joints and rubble as well as the earthen area. I Pre-colored the hemp with green paint years ago, therefore the look. But as I will paint the whole scene later, I could have used unpainted as well. With scissors I shaped the longer grass tufts when they were dry and tried to correct the shape into a more natural looking one. And with my airbrush I blew away the loose material and shaped it more with tweezers. To bring some variation into this white vegetation stripe I applied some self gluing weed mats. Although they are self gluing after removing the transparent carrier foil I like to support the hold with some wood glue. And with that the basic vegetation was done for now. After painting the base I will add some more flowers and plants which I don't want to apply now. To finally finish the frame I applied some of Bergswerk modeling spatula to fill the gaps at the corners. This is perfect to create a smooth finish, very light and easy to work with. Of course the corners of the back side of the wall and the house had to be smoothened too with the spatula. And with a silicon brush I applied the spatula to fill the gaps all around the building to make it one with the frame like here at the roof. When the spatula dried out what it did without shrinking I sanded the treated areas with a fine sanding sponge and with that considered the frame done and ready for painting. Now I could set up the scene for a test fitting. And finally put the tank and accessories in place to see how the scene harmonizes. And with that being said, we made it for today and finished the first part, the building of the diorama. I hope you liked what you saw, enjoyed the video and maybe could learn a thing or two. As always it was a great fun working with the materials like balsa wood or styrofoam as the these materials offer endless possibilities and are a pleasure to work with. The next video will obviously be about painting and weathering the scene and I'm already looking forward to bring some paint on it. If you like what you saw please consider supporting me by subscribing and I hope to see you again here. So. That's it for today, thank you for watching, stay safe and see you the next time.